second. Thank you. <laughs> to be on, uh, on the lookout. going to have some hymn sing, yeah? So, what shall we sing? Yes. 375. Why don't we sing 301? We've been singing that every Sunday. Let's, uh, since it's communion day today, let's sing uh, verse 3. Verse 3 of 301. Let us build a house where her love is one in water, wine, and we have bathed it up on holy ground where peace and justice meet. Here the love of God through Jesus is revealed in time and space as we share in Christ the peace that frees us. All our work will come, all our work will come, all our work will come in this place.
Say again, Carol. Three zero zero. And then one more and then that'll be it. Okay. Yes. 132. Good morning and welcome to this community of faith on the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Oh, that today you will listen to God's voice. Amen. Amen. Now, come. Good morning, and welcome to the First Presbyterian Church as we celebrate Labor Day weekend, and we celebrate the coming of the new fall season and the closing of the summer season, and we look forward to all our fall church activities, which we're going to be fantastic, and we're all going to have a great time, and bring your friends to all our events. For visitors and members alike, the yellow attendance cards in the pews are a direct communication to pastor. If you have a question, concern, prayer request, or message, please fill out the card and place it in the offering plate. For those who wish to make an electronic donation, you can do so with your smartphone via Zelle or PayPal. Our address to donate for both payment services is donate at Springfield Presbyterian.org. Please contact the office if you would like to dedicate a floral arrangement for our weekly worship service. Today's flowers are in memory of Joan Lyons at the request of Eunice Amarby. And I hope I pronounced your name correctly, Eunice. And they, it was a wonderful thought. We all love Joan and Ted so dearly, and we do miss them. If you would like to host fellowship hour, there are sign-up sheets on the information table in the gathering area in the chapel. Now, most importantly, as we all know, we are having our Sunday rally event next Sunday. Following the 10, 15 a.m. worship service, we will meet in the chapel for food, including ice cream with lots of sprinkles and gooey chocolate syrup and caramel syrup and whipped cream and probably cherry on the top. <laughs> cherry on the top, maybe two. There will be games and a presentation as well as food. And after the, present, after the games and the food, there will be a presentation of various initiatives that we are kicking off in the fall. Now, all postcards were sent out 
to uh, addresses that we had. So please invite your friends and neighbors. And if anyone did not receive a card, please raise your hand and Russ will bring one to you. And if not, you want additional ones to pass out to your neighborhood or your friends, there are more cards on the table for the sign-up sheets, where the sign-up sheet is. At the conclusion of our time together, there will be sign-up sheets available for you to select how you will be participating in these wonderful programs, the sign to engage our Springfield community and beyond. Uh, Pastor Roberto has several wonderful plans that I have seen. Lisa has posted it on Facebook, so looking forward to a good fall season. Now, we need volunteers. This is a very big request, especially for cleanup. So please see Pastor Roberto or Lisa Guido after the service today so they can add your name to our volunteer list. And again, we do need volunteers, so, so please help. We thank Richard, oh, and I'll say this Richard again, I hope I pronounce it right, Coratori, Coratori, for serving as our accompanist while Lilia has been on vacation. Oh, thank you, and uh, we'll continue with our service. God is able to shape us and reshape us. God labors tirelessly at the wheel on our behalf, and when flaws are found in us, God works diligently to remedy them. This is from Manathia Porter Young. Join me now for the call to worship. God has made us in all our intricate detail. It's not about how tall you are or how big your muscles. God looks for those who respect him. We depend on God. We are going to keep an eye out for God's love. The loving kindness of God is our hope and we rejoice. Every time we trust, we hope we come to God. God is waiting for us every time. The opening prayer. Mm -hmm. Now I'd like to say our prayer of illumination. Let us pray. No, the prayer, no, the opening. opening prayer. Oh, flip back on the first page. Right here. I put it right here for you. Oh, we have this. Okay. Opening prayer. Opening prayer. I'm sorry. Opening prayer. Let us pray. We come to you, O God of wonder. Because you first came to us, you have known us long before we came into this world, and you have searched for a relationship with us and with all your children. Draw us back into the wonder of searching for a deeper connection with you. And in that searching, may we come to better know ourselves as we truly are and as you would want us to be. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first opening hymn will be 761, called as Partners in Christ's Service. Please stand.
at us. Are you, you're a child, right? Come on, be with us. Oh. Hi, how's all my friends today? Good, good, good. I'm gonna show you a picture. And it's a clay model. And I want you to tell me what you think this clay model is. A person? Yes. People. It's a, it's a person, people. Now, this one on the right, how does that one look to you? Does that look like a person? You don't think it looks like a person? The, the one here, this one here. Yes. That looks like a pet. It looks like a <laughs> pet. That's not what I was looking for, but if you see that as a pet, it's supposed to look like a person. Now this one over here, this one got three arms and two legs. Is that a human being? That does, that's not a human being, is it? Mm -hmm. So now I, I brought something else. Mm -hmm. Now, if God was made us in his image, and we're all supposed to resemble what God would say is people and person, what do you think this is? A monster. Do you think that God would want us to look like this? No. Why not? What's wrong with this? I don't see anything wrong with this thing. It looks scary. It looks scary. What else is strange about this? Uh, it has spikes on the back of his <laughs> head. God forbid we'd have spikes on the back of our heads. It looks like it eats other like flesh, like eats like meat. It looked, like, <laughs> it looked like he would eat somebody. <laughs> so you don't want to look like that, right? And so you can imagine that God formed us and molded us and shaped us to look like the way we look now. Now, some of us may not be happy with the way we look, but you know what? You're stuck, whether you like it or not. So you may as well be happy with what you got, right? All righty then. So imagine God punching and pulling us in the right physical shape. In other words, shaping us and molding us into what we look like today. So do you believe that God shaped you into what he wanted you to be? What do you think? Do you think he shaped you in the way you're supposed to be? I think so, too. How about you? Mm -hmm. you? Yeah, right, because you don't have three arms. You don't have spikes on the back of your head. So, <laughs> so some people wear hairstyles that look like I have spikes on top of their head. But we you resemble human beings. So, so the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah was called to go to a house of a potter. Do you know what a potter is? <laughs> I think, Pastor, can you help us to show what pottery looks like? Oh, yeah. Pottery, yeah, I know what that is. Here's the potter here. This is what a potter does. Hmm, this type of... Uh Pottery. This is a vase. This is a little jug. Um, I'm going to explain this in just a second. This is uh, a musical instrument. Looks like a face, doesn't it? Yeah, like that. So potters do that. Um, some are utilitarian, like this. I'm going to explain what that is later. Some are fun, like this one. So the message this morning, thank you. So you know what a pot pottery is, right? Mm -hmm. So a potter molds us. So instead of molding us to look like that, he molded us to look like the way we look now. So we can't always take care of things that come our way, no matter how hard we try. And sometimes we try to make ourselves something that we are not. But you gotta be yourself at all times, don't you think so? Now, I'm gonna tell you about a little analogy that I read from Africa and it's about a pencil. And the parable of the pencil goes like this. It says, I want you to remember four things about a pencil that refers to you. First, your goodness or true worth is within you. Just remind you of a pencil. Your goodness and true worth is within you, okay? Second, you'll need to be sharpened mm -hmm. as you go through life. Mm -hmm. You think so? Mm -hmm. You need to be sharpened. Mm -hmm. Third, you'll be in someone else's hand, otherwise you'll make an awful mess. Isn't that true of a pencil? You think? You think so? Come on, baby, come over here. 
Fourth, you'll be expected to leave a mark. Is that what a pencil does? Yes. It leaves a mark. So, God is the potter, and we are the clay. Now, why do you think we are the clay? Because we are the ones that are being shaped and you and modeled, being modeled. Did everybody hear what Charles said? Say it again, louder. We are the people. Louder. We are the people who are being shaped and modeled. Modeled. He gets it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Charles. We are the ones who are being shaped and modeled. So, you have already been shaped and modeled when he brought you up from the earth and he shaped you and he made you beautiful the way you are. And we are all God's children. Aren't we all beautiful? Yes. Come on, let me hear you. Are we all beautiful? Yes. Amen. Let us pray. Repeat after me. May God our potter reshape us. May God our potter reshape us. Through grace and love. Through grace and love. And to disciples of Jesus Christ. And disciples of Jesus Christ. And makes a, make us vessels. And make us vessels. Able to share the grace. Able to share the grace. And love of God with this world. And love of God in this world. Amen. Amen. All right. You were great. Thank you. Here, honey, this is my gift. You're a guest. And don't forget your pencil. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. You know, God created a few, a few perfect heads, the rest he covered with hair. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen, brother. Amen. <laughs> All right. I ask this every Sunday. I'm going to ask it again. Um, Raise your hand if you are perfect. Okay, good. Okay, okay. Uh, I mean, good company then. Um, yeah, we're not. The scripture says that the path of faithfulness is oftentimes difficult and full of obstacles, many of our own making. So let us humbly approach the God who calls and creates, confessing the sins that turns us away from new life in Christ. And then receiving the assurance of God's pardon. Let us do this together. We must admit, loving God, that if faith is a trust which cannot be confirmed, it is easier not to trust. If, if faith, faith is the gut feeling that, that hope is, is just around, around the corner, we prefer, prefer to keep our eyes closed. And surely, if faith is to be lived out in difficult moments, we often live it behind at home. Call us into your backyard, God of wonder, to point up to the stars and remind us that we cannot begin to imagine or count how many times you will forgive us. Give us the trust to have faith in you, the faith to hope in you, and the assurance you will surround us with the grace, hope, and wonder Share with us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. This is the good news of God's love. We will trust in those things that last, in the grace which counts, in the mercy no one can take away from us. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen. Take a moment to reflect on your own shortcomings and also reflect on the pardon that comes from God. O God, who restores and resurrects, grant us new life in Jesus Christ. Know that you are forgiven and live fully in joyful freedom. Amen. Glory to God, whose goodness shines on me, and to the sun, whose goodness pardon me, and to the Spirit, whose love has set me free, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be.
one another. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Amen, peace amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. I will be reading to you this morning from the Old Testament scripture of Jeremiah 18, 1 through 11, from the New Revised Standard Version. Now, let me give you, it's not on? Am I on, Jim? Let me give you a little synopsis about what this, this particular scripture is all about. God uses the image of the potter's wheel in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 18. The potter is not happy with what has happened. The shape has spoiled. So the potter has reworked it. In the same way, God can shape what is to come for the people who have gone astray. God can shape a new future if the people turn from their way. But God can change their mind about what they were to make if the people do not change their ways. Now prepared to hear the words from our Jeremiah. The words that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done, says the Lord? Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment, I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from evil, I will change my mind about the disaster that I intended to bring on it. And in another moment, I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build it and plant it. But if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, 
Then I will change my mind about the good that I had intended to do. Now, therefore, say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, thus says the Lord, look, I am a potter shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Turn now, all of you, from your evil way and amend your ways and your doings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. The New Testament scripture comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14. Also from the New Revised Standard Version of the <clears throat> Gospel. Let me um, give you a synopsis that Pastor Lindsay prepared for us. Jesus speaks of weighing the cost of Luke in Luke <coughs> uh, 14, 25 to 33 in order to fill, fully understand what a life of following Jesus entails. That one must be willing to give up everything and go all in. Following Jesus is not a movement or a fad, but a way of life that leads through the cross and will cost everything. In Jesus' day for the disciples, the cost included family relationship. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Now large crowds were traveling with him, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. <clears throat> For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation, and he's not able to finish, all who sees it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able, with 10,000, to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So, therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I build things. I, that's my passion. I build things things, um, from the simplicity of cutting uh, some uh, ingredients together and prepping a, a meal, you know, build a, a, a dinner for my fr family, to the complexity of converting some discarded wood into a table, I build things. From the magic of turning old newspapers and glue into paper mache and then puppets, one day I'll show you my puppets. Some of you have seen it already. To the finery of mixing some dirt with water to make a plate of clay. While I'm pretty good with wood and paper mache, my skill at the potter's wheel is, oh, what can we say, mediocre at best? Things just keep collapsing. They just fall down while I'm working on it. And often I find myself having to start from scratch. See, pottery is a balancing act. Any potters here? Anybody done ceramics ever? All right. This all will sound new to you. Okay. So pay attention. First, you have to have the right material. You cannot make pottery with just any dirt. Yes, it's all dirt, but as some of you know, there are quite a few varieties, right? You can have basic clay or you can have porcelain, cowling clay, that's what China is made of, bone china, have you ever heard about that one? It's mixed with animal bone powder for resilience, it's great. You can use high silica or any number of oxides and other minerals that create this uh, result or that effect and so on. Everything that affects the strength and resilience of the final product and determine 
the way this final product will be used. It's all about the material, first and foremost. Second, you have to choose the right method of shaping the material. Not all ceramic is spun. You can also mold it, you can also carve it, or you can combine all three things, right? Third, it has to be the right consistency for the job. Too wet on a wheel, it will fall apart. Too dry in a mold, it will not work. And last, it must be fired at the right temperature for the kind of results you want. Very high temperature for porcelain, 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit, if you must know. Lower temperature for earthware, somewhere in between for stoneware. <coughs> Why am I telling you all this? Do I want you to be ceramicist? Do I want you to go out and do clay work and all that? No, unless you want to, you know, pick up a hobby and do ceramics. I'm telling you this because the intersection of the parable of God as the potter and Jesus' injunction to pick up the cross and follow him is the realization that being, being a disciple of Christ is hard work, just like ceramic. Hard work, just like ceramic. I know nobody wants to hear that. And I'm not here to lay a guilt trip on you about what you ought to be doing, what you have done, what you haven't done, and what needs to be done. You see, most Christians come to church to experience God and the community in worship. Most come to church to be well with our souls and to hear an uplifting message, sing some familiar song and feel like we have been recharged for the hard week ahead, right? There's nothing wrong with that. But when we hear the parable of God as the potter, we can imagine God making us and remaking us to be servants of the realm of God. Each of us can imagine ourselves uh, collapsing upon ourselves with the trials of life, the death of someone we love, a divorce, a child that goes astray. Any of those things collapse us. And we can imagine God remaking us into something new, giving us new opportunities, being reshapen in a way that we didn't even think was possible, be restored to wholeness. And we are grateful for that, aren't you? We are. We are grateful that God gives us one chance after another to be whole, to be whole, to go from a broken vessel into something intact. We are grateful that God has enough patience and love to put up with our imperfections and make us anew every time. We are grateful, but too many However, stop at that, at just gratitude. Gratitude. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me the opportunity, for remaking me, for restoring me, for making me whole. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But I submit to you that God's patience and love to mold and remold us it is so that God can create and recreate useful recipients, useful tools. That's where the hard work of being a disciple comes in. We can be all manner of ceramic creation. I brought some examples. You want to hear? Do you want to hear them? Yeah? Are you here? Yeah. Are you awake? Yeah. Oh, good. Excellent. Some among us may be fine porcelain, like this one. This one comes from Israel. Okay? It's cured 
refine in high fire. Refine like hard events in your life can refine you. And you know what it's good for? To carry food. To carry food. This is a plate for bread that is used in Israel. Okay? So think of fine porcelain. Some of you are such. To carry food. To distribute food for those who need it. Some among you are silica clay, like this one, made in Turkey. It's enameled on the inside, fire at high temperature. You know what it's good for? Wine. Yeah, it's filled with wine. They make it in all kinds of sizes. And then you pour that to the glasses of your guests. Some of you are just like this a very fine instrument to provide drink for the thirsty world around you. Some among you are, oh, you're not going to like this, like this. This is ceramic too. This is a brick. It's a brick. It's made of clay. You know what it's good for? Building to make foundations for the ministries and the things that we need to do together. Some of you may not be fine porcelain, may not be uh, carriers of food, but you are the foundation of the ministry of this church. Some of you may be, I don't know, stoneware. This is a reproduction of the clay jars, stoneware, from the Dead Sea. What they found inside of those <clears throat> jars were scrolls, the oldest scrolls ever found of a writing of the New Testament. They're almost 2,000 years old. You know what's in it? The Word of God. And some of you are just like this and contain knowledge, experience, in the word of God and are ready to distribute that and to share it with people around you. Oh, you may not be able to distribute wine or food and you may not know anything about buildings and grounds and you know, you're not a brick, but you have knowledge and you're willing to share it. Some among us are fashioned with clay like a musical instrument. You know what this is called? This is called an ocarina, and it's an instrument from the Mapuche Indians in Chile. I picked it up right there. I don't know how to play it, but some that do will bring out a beautiful sound out of it. A beautiful, beautiful sound out of it. And it, yeah, made of the same material, the same clay that makes a brick or makes a, a, a stoneware. Some among us may feel just like this little jog. It, it, it won't stay. It's kind of wobbly and unstable. Some of us feel like that, right? Yeah? But with the proper support, this thing goes on a base. With the proper support, this is the perfect jog for spice-infused olive oil. That's what I use it for. Very useful for that very purpose, the right side. Some of you may be wobbly and unsteady on your feet, but there is something precious in you that you are willing to share, that you are willing to partake with others. Some of you might uh, feel like this little thing, small, perhaps even insignificant. Well, this little thing is designed to contain one single olive. Yeah, something small, right? But you know what you can do with an olive? First of all, you can flavor your drink. I don't know, any martini lovers here? Yeah, an olive, boom. Charles, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Olives can provide a savory taste to almost any dish. 
And so this little thing, this little insignificant thing is the carrier of something flavorful, of something wonderful to share with your guests. Some of you might be made uh, in the fashion of this lamp. This is a Roman oil lamp. And yes, it's authentic. It's been in my family for generations. And you fill it with oil. There is a wick, and you light it up, and it provides light. Some of you may be this, this fragile oil lamp providing light to all around you. And that's your purpose and your ministry. Look, I may fancy myself as a fine porcelain, but perhaps the potter is making, oh, I don't know, something like this, a rough, heavy ball that, you know, I'm kind of like that. Not very refined at all, and uh, that uh, uh, maybe I can be used as a paperweight. I don't know. Some purpose, and whatever purpose that is, I will follow that purpose. That purpose I must serve. Look, folks, I'm going to say it really plainly. Christianity is not a spectator's sport. It's not a spectator's sport. It's not something you watch others do. It's community building. Following the Christ is not a walk in the park, but a climb. Hand in hand with fellow travelers united in the decision to carry together a burden of service. Being a disciple is not joining a club for fancy fellowship, but making a commitment to share in each other's crosses. That's the call. What a lesson. God shaping and reshaping us for ministry, changing us from, oh, I don't know, squishy, dirt, wet dirt into something uh, 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 like a vessel, like any of these things here and more, a tool to suit the needs of God's people right here, right now. What a lesson. God inviting us to share in the joy and cost of discipleship. What a lesson. God is inviting us to share in the mystery of God's reconciliation, no matter who you are or where you are in your life journey. No matter your condition, no matter your age, no matter your race, no matter your identity and preferences, no matter how you identify yourself or any other of those categories we have created, you have a place in God's plan. You, yes, you, each and every one of you. We all have a role to play in the building of the realm of God and to welcome others to do likewise. To build a realm of justice, a realm of peace, a realm of love for all creation. Look, as we start a new season, we are faced with the opportunity to be useful, to be a vessel, to feed the hungry through, for example, the SHARE initiative. You'll hear more about that next Sunday at our Rally Sunday Day. We will have opportunity to be a container of care, if you will, through our ASH, our after-school home program. More about that next Sunday at our rally day. Or the opportunity to be a brick to support the ministry and the committees of the church. Let me ask you, what kind of dirt are you made of? What kind of dirt are you made of? What kind of fine clay porcelain are you made of? What kind of minerals are in your soul? Whichever kind, the Almighty has a plan to use your material to do on earth the will of God as it is done in heaven. Let us pray. Divine Potter, make us Carve us, mold us, use us for your glory and the edification of your creation. Amen. Amen. Take a moment to reflect 
on what kind of material you're made of and how can God use you. confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of the people. This is the season of peace, and it's about the climate change. Let us pray. Holy God, earth and air and water are your creation, and every living thing belongs to you. Have mercy on us as climate change confronts us. Give us all the will and the courage to simplify the way we live, to reduce the energy we use, to share the resources you provide, and to bear cost of change. To give, give our past mistakes, send us your spirit with wisdom and present controversies and vision of the future to which you call us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Dear God, thank you for giving us Jesus and for the joy and the peace he offers us. Help us to be his followers and to give you everything that he asks of us. Make us into his true disciples, true followers in his way. You have called your church to carry the cross, to follow Christ in faithful discipleship. Let not family, prosperity, or pride separate us from the infinite love of God given to us through Christ Jesus our Lord. Guide us in your path, O oh God, that we may live in your love. Inspire with your wisdom those who make choices which affect the lives of others, especially all who carry authority in the nations of the world, that they may amend their ways and cooperate with your will to build and plant rather than to pluck up and break down compassionate one look upon the whole human race and discern all thoughts from afar that everyone may walk with integrity and grace and be saved saved from oppression greed and violence loving one of the people of this community are your vessels we are your vessels and you we are like the clay and the potter's hand mold and work us with your benevolent craft that we may reflect your image of loving compassion lord hear our prayer this coming, upcoming Monday is Labor Day. We pray for those whose work we depend on. We pray for those who do monotonous jobs for us every day. Supermarket workers, mail sorters, men who fill potholes, women who do the laundry, those who deliver newspapers or who need public gardens. We need public gardens. Cleaners in offices and hospitals, factory workers, cooks and waiters and parking attendants. We pray for those who do exacting work where every detail is important. Nurses, bus drivers, tool makers, pharmacists, pilots, pathology technicians, cabinet makers, psychiatrists, tailors and lawyers, accountants and opticians. We pray for those who work as always under critical observation. Counselors and politicians, doctors and social workers, teachers and school principals, students and police officers, secretaries and job assistants, bricklayers, and all who cook family meals. We pray for those who are in today's crisis. We pray, loving God, for those who from life has become unexpectedly difficult. The victims of road accidents and their stunned loved ones. People discovered that they have contracted a serious disease or have loved ones who are dying or has died. We pray for once loving relationships that are falling apart and for parents who are distressed for their runaway children, for single parents and parentless children, and the victims of domestic abuse whose cries for help have gone unnoticed by family or friends. We pray for anyone who had just lost their jobs or have been long unemployed, those who continue on a most stressful work situation, those who suffer racist or sexual discrimination and the many whose desperate need for employment has been exploited by ruthless greed. We pray for the church. 
We pray, loving God, for the church and its many denominations and with its numerous parishes and city and country. Bless those faithful and active members who are the backbone of each congregation. Those lay leaders who carry uneven loads, the elderly members who regret that they can no longer serve the church as they once did, and the young folk who are keen for some responsibility. And now, is there anyone here who would like to have a prayer? Yes. Let me get... For Russ, he's having surgery on Friday. Okay, for Russell, who's having surgery on Friday. This Russell here? That Russell there. <laughs> may the good Lord be with you, and may the physicians, the anesthesiologists, and everybody guy that touches you guide their way. With Jesus Christ, go knowing that you will be just fine. Amen. 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 What else? Yes, Angela? Thank you. She's praying for all those who bring her to church. God bless them. She can't drive anymore, but she has to depend on others to bring her. So, yes, God bless them indeed. Who else? Angela. Prayers for the youth that start back to school or that have already started back to school, that they have successful years. Amen. Amen. Yes. Um, also Chris. for a great uh, week we had with Angela's parents and that they safely made it back to Iowa home, and so they <laughs> made, had a great trip after not having traveled for a long time. We had a really good time with them, and they were grateful to have been We here. had a good time with them, too. God bless them, and I'm glad they got back home safely. Yes. I give prayers and thanks for friendship. Uh, today, the flowers are in memory of Joan Lyons by Eunice, and I actually sent a picture of the flowers to her son, and he said, God bless you, Eunice, and he thanks us for remembering Joan. Amen. God bless Joan and beautiful flowers that was donated by Unit. Oh, we have a lot of prayers today. Look at that. Yes, right. prayers that I was able to spend time with my five grandchildren. Okay. Mine and Pat's combined. And uh, we each had a lovely time and we spent it separately. So it's enjoyable to relive my youth through them. And I'm sure Russell and... Uh, and Loretta can say the same about their grandchildren because I know they spend a lot of time with theirs. And thank you. Amen. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Eunice. We got one in the back there. A prayer for my friend Kim and our safe return home. All right. Beautiful. I think we have Heather. Did you raise your hand? Okay, Eunice, it's your turn. Yes. He's going to bring the mic. To oh, to continue with grandchildren. These are great grand niece and nephew of mine. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. My great niece, grand niece my and niece, nephew. My niece is their grandmother. Oh. And they're here with their mother. Beautiful. Well, thank you. And Many generations. Indeed. Thank you for sharing up us with them this morning. It was beautiful. They're a beautiful family. Thank you. Amen. I know they're your heart and your soul. Amen. Oh, all right. Active this morning. Oh, I got my work <laughs> We actually have good news. Lauren, our daughter Lauren, got engaged yesterday oh, to her fiance. Yay! Adam. <laughs> all right. Congratulations to her. And may she have a very happy time with her, during her engagement. God bless her. Amen. All righty. Now let's go head on with our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, will thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily, our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the power and, and the, the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. We will now have our sacrament of the Lord's Supper. As we remember our unity with all Christians of every time and place, it is a most fitting occasion to observe the sacrament of communion. In preparation for the sacrament, we invite you to look through your own kitchen, those of home, and find beverage and bread. While there is rich symbolism in the elements which we traditionally use to celebrate the Lord's Supper, the church also has a long history of using the most fitting materials that are readily available in any given time and setting. So feel free to be creative and use what you have on hand. Now let us celebrate the Lord's Supper together. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from the east and the west and from the north and the south and sit at table at the kingdom of God. Now according to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave to them. Then their eyes were open. They recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast which he has pre prepared. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Yes, it is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, creator and ruler of the universe. With the majesty of your hand, you shape this world and all that is in it. By your Holy Spirit, you breathe life into human form and set us on the earth to praise and serve you. When we wandered from your ways and were lost in sin's wilderness, your truth burned in the hearts of prophets who called your people to return to the path of righteousness. In the fullness of time, you sent your son to be our deliverer. To every age, your Holy Spirit has led us in your ways. Rising from the grave, he won for us victory over death. Seated at your right hand, he leads us to eternal life. We praise you that Christ now reigns with your glory and will come again to make all things new. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever say to the glory of your name, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. At his baptism by John, your spirit came with gentle wings, settling on him your blessing. In the wilderness of temptation, your spirit stood by with power. In his life and ministry, your spirit led him to serve the poor, proclaim freedom from sin's bondage, open eyes with faith sight, and befriend the friendless and the outcast. In all he did and said, he announced the coming of your saving might. By his death on the cross and rising from the tomb, he broke the power of death and led the way to eternal life. Ascended to rule from on high, Christ prays for us and promises the coming of peace and power. We give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before he died, took bread. And after he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, given up for you. Do this in remembrance of me. <clears throat> Please save your bread and your juice until after one is served.
This is the body of Christ. Do this in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. The cup of salvation. The cup of the new covenant. He poured out his blood shed for the forgiveness of sins. Take, drink, do this in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take, drink, blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of our Lord. The gift of God for the people of God. Prayer after supper. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us, and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living, holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ has is risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Gracious God, put out your Holy Spirit upon us and these, your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread which we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who ba are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Prayer of thanksgiving together. Look at your bulletins. It should be in your bulletins. Gracious God, you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. You have fed us with the bread of life and renewed us for your service. Help us who have shared Christ's body and received his cup to be his faithful disciples so that our daily living may be part of the life of your kingdom and our love be your love reaching out into the life of the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we like to present our offering and our gifts to God so others might know that God's steadfast love is present with them in every moment. Amen. Our solo will be by Clarence Davis, 
and he will be singing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. sing our doxology. Praise to God the Father. together the prayer of dedication as, as we, we learn, learn to, to follow you, you as, as we, we seek, seek to be, be as generous as you, you we, discover we discover that we, that we can, can give others with hope with, with grace and with, and with peace. peace receive, receive our, our offerings this, this day so that we may bless your, your children in every way, way imaginable this, this we pray in the, in the name, name of Jesus, of Jesus. Amen. amen our closing hymn is arise, your light has come. <clears throat> Remain standing. <clears throat>
Amen. The benediction. Now, go out loving one another. Praise the Lord. And everything you say and do, make sure you do it with the Lord in mind. Remember that we are all Christ's children, and he loves us all. He molded and shaped us to who we are, and let us be satisfied and grateful. May the Lord be with you for now and forever. Amen. Amen. We will now have our postlude. Yes. I hope he's coming back for Sunday, Pastor, oh, with his family. Nice. Yes. And, and before we go, I forgot to mention earlier, we have a happy birthday to yes. Debbie Kay and Chris R., who will be celebrating next week. So if we could sing happy birthday. <laughs> 